Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. In this video, I am going to tell you an industrial method to measure the performance of any storage device. It can be any type of hard disk, any type of magnetic disk, any type of SSD, for example SATA SSD, NVMe SSD, SCSI, etc. So in this method, we are going to utilize FIO tool. FIO stands for Flexible I.O. Testers. It is a free tool available at GitHub. I will give you its link in the description section below and I will also describe the steps to install it. And the very important thing about this FIO tool is this tool is used to benchmark the performance of different storage devices and storage devices from different different vendors. Now without wasting much time, let us see how to measure performance of any storage device using FIO. Friends, one must be very much cautious before using FIO tool, especially when right performance is measured using FIO tool. Because in the right performance, FIO tool writes in different sectors of the disk and then measures the uh, performance of the disk. So if there is something useful data in the disk, for example, if there is any operating system or any other critical information, FIO tool will rewrite it. So it is not recommended to use FIO tool if your disk has some very useful data. Friends, in this video, I will knowingly commit this mistake and I will run random write and sequential write operation uh, on the disk which has operating system and other boot uh, sectors. So without wasting much time, let us get started. Friends, this is my host machine where I have connected two SSDs. One is SATA SSD and another is NVMe SSD. All the SSDs come under the category of block devices and block devices can be seen using command LSBLK. So this is my SATA SSD which is partitioned into two parts SDA2 and SDA1. And this is my NVMe SSD. Friends, SATA SSDs are low cost and low performance SSDs which can be easily found in low cost laptops and PCs. In contrast, NVMe SSDs are high end SSDs which are very high performance SSDs and these can be found easily in high end laptops and PC configurations. Firstly, we will see the performance of SATA SSD and then we will measure the performance of NVMe SSD. Let us see. Friends, if you want to see the details of uh, the SD device attached to this computer, then you can go here at this path and you can check the model. This is Samsung SSD PM83. Similarly, you can also check other parameters. There are many other parameters that you can see here. For example, if you want to check the size, you can check like this. Let me clear this. LSBLK. Now, if you want to check the details of NVMe SSD, then you can go here and it will show the model of uh, SSD and vendor is Samsung only. Now you can see other parameters also. For example, here, if I write size, it will print size and so on. Friends, now I'm going to take the performance of uh, SATA SSD. Let me type LSBLK. I will run the performance test on partition 2. It doesn't matter if even if you run on SD1. So we will use this FIO tool. And in the first go, we will measure random read performance. Random read meaning we will read the SSD from random locations. Although there are many other options used along with this FIO tool that I will explain later. Let us see what is the random read performance. Friends, I am only running it for 10 seconds. Run time is 10 seconds here. So performance is 38.9k IOPS. One very important point I want to mention here. Performance is measured in terms of IOPS. Here our performance is 38.740k IOPS. Now the very important question is what is IOPS? IOPS is IO per second. And what is IO? IO is number of blocks transmitted per second. 
and we gave the size of block is equal to 4 kilobytes so that means IOPS is telling us these many blocks are transmitted per second and block size is 4 kilobytes so if we multiply this number of blocks with the size of block we will get the bandwidth which will be in kilobytes per second so that means we are getting a traffic at 154.960 kilobytes per second friends now let me go through some of the very important FIO options name you have to choose it as global only IO engine when we are measuring performance using FIO tool we have to choose IO engine as lib AI only this is industry standard file name file name is a basically device name where we want to run our test so device is SDA2 that means partition 2 that means it is SATA SSD and now let me tell you block size block size is 4k block size 4k meaning we are instructing the FIO tool that whenever it is running random read operation it has to read data in chunks of 4 kilobytes only not less or not more and here operation is random read as I already mentioned now important point is number of jobs here I mentioned number of jobs as 60 but now let us assume that if I am putting number of jobs as 1 only number of jobs 1 meaning 1 CPU will initiate 1 thread to run random read on the SSD Similarly, if I put number of jobs as 2, that means 2 CPUs will initiate 2 uh, threads to run random read on the SSD. Similarly, if number of jobs are 6, so that means 6 CPUs will initiate 6 threads to run random read on the SSD. In this host machine, I have only 6 CPUs. But now, if I put number of jobs as 12 and number of CPUs are 6 only, so that means each CPU will initiate two threads to run random read operation on SSD. Although it will be less effective when we are going more than number of CPUs, when we are initiating more threads than number of CPUs, it will not be that effective. Now IO depth. For each thread initiated by the CPU, there will be a queue where the CPU can submit its commands and can be used by some other task. So for each thread, whatever queue is there and the depth of that queue will be 128 in this case because I have mentioned IO depth as 128. So that means for each thread CPU can submit 128 commands and each command is responsible to read data of 4 kilobytes because block size is 4 kilobytes. And here the runtime is 10 seconds. We give time here in seconds. And for the time being, let us take direct as one only. And group reporting is enable it always. It is easy to read the output from it. And now just remember that the SATA SSD has random read performance of 38K. Just remember 38K. Now we will see what is its sequential read performance. Sequential read meaning when we read the SSD from sequential locations. Let us see. For sequential read, instead of random read, we put here simple read. Simple read meaning sequential read only. Let me change it. Now let us run. You see there is a huge difference the performance is 122k when random read was only 38k sequential read is 
more than 100k. As I mentioned, FI tool also uh, gives us the average IOPS value, which is 121k IOPS. Friends, let me put all the values that we have calculated in one table. So this was random read on SATA SSD. It was 38 kilo IOPS. And sequential read it is 121k IOPS. Let us calculate other values also. And we will compare it with NVMe SSD. Now let us run random write. So I need to change here random write. Let me change. Rand write. Now run it. Let me mention here random write will be always less than random read. Obviously less than sequential read. You see the value is very less. And let us see its average IOPS value. Average IOPS is 17k only. Let us put it in the table. I have put this value in this table. And now let us quickly calculate the other values. Now let us calculate sequential write. Here it is random write. We simply change it to write. Now let us run it. Let us see its average value. It is 66k. Uh, let us also put it in the table. Friends, we have calculated all the values for SATA SSD. Now I know one of the obvious questions will be coming into your mind that how to measure the right performance of a SSD having very useful information. Friends, it is not recommended to use FIO tool uh, to measure the right performance of an SSD having useful information. But if you still want to measure that performance, then you have to partition a SSD and that partition should not have any information. And now let us see for NVMe SSD. Friends, when we want to run FI on NVMe SSD, we simply need to change file name as NVMe 0 and 1 instead of SDA2. Let us see how. Let us run random read in the first go. And here I, I was saying that we need to change the file name. Let me change. NVMe 0 and 1. Now run F5. You see friend it is huge. It is almost 7 40k IOPS and for SATA SSD it was only 38k. I will put it in the table. See the average value is 741 kilo IOPS which is huge. Now let us quickly run other operations. Now let us run sequential read. We need to simply make it as read and let us run it. Now let us see. This is 720k. Sequential read is a little bit less than random read. It is a little bit surprise for me also. Let us see the average value. Average value is almost 700 kilo IOPS. Let me put it in the table. Now let me run random write on NVMe SSD. I need to change here random sorry and write and let us run it this 380 round which is also very good number as compared to our SATA SSD and let us see its every number now it is around 384k let me put it in the table Now let us calculate the last value that is sequential write and for sequential write I will simply remove this rand. Let us run this. Let us see. Oh, it is also equal to random write value only. It is 
three eighty five k. Now let us see the average value. Average value is three eighty four kilo ohms. Let me put all the values in the table. Friends, this is the final table. These are the readings for SATA SSD for block size four k, and these are the value for NVMe SSD for block size four k. These values are IOPS, and in the bracket I have written the bandwidth, which is in kilobytes or megabytes per second. So if we see random read for SATA SSD, it is only thirty-eight kilo IOPS, and for NVMe SSD, it is around seven fifty kilo IOPS. Then write also it is seventeen kilo IOPS only, but for NVMe SSD, it is three eighty kilo IOPS. Similarly, there is a huge difference in sequential read. For SATA SSD, it is one twenty one kilo IOPS, and for NVMe SSD, it is seven hundred kilo IOPS. And sequential write also for SATA SSD, it is sixty six kilo IOPS, and for NVMe SSD, it is three eighty four kilo IOPS. So this way, uh, we used to benchmark all the SSDs with the help of FIO tool. It is very useful. friends with this i am going to end this video i hope this would be uh, quite informative for all of you if you have any query please write down in the comment section friends this way we have calculated the performance or bandwidth of the ssd but there is one very important parameter that is called latency of the ssd so as a subsequent part and in the separate video I will tell you how to calculate the latency of an SSD using a FIO tool. So for those who has not subscribed my channel yet, please subscribe it because we are going to create many such videos in future which will be quite informative for all of you. And for notification of our video, do not forget to press the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching.